Welcome to the Author Ed Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I am uh, Bear Connard from Ace Performance. Sweet. Welcome. And this is Welcome. our show about anything and everything off-road. I say that every time, but like we can talk about car stuff too. Because I'm pretty sure the episode with Johnny, we talked about only EV and like car stuff the whole time. So pretty much. Don't. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to slay anything too much for us. Um, as always, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we've ever done the show. I'm still in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. The Bear's also in the Northeast. So we're, we're like tagging in that small group of shows where we actually have people <laughs> in the same time zones. <laughs> A rarity. It is. Um, we're going to jump straight into Bear and Ace performance because you and I are boring and we'll probably do like a SEMA catch-up show later. And so people can just, they want to listen to our updates next episode. SEMA and press cars. Coming soon to a show near you. Yeah, literally next episode. So literally, <laughs> I control that. I will. I will determine that. <laughs> um, uh, so, Bear, where do you want to start? You want to give us an overview of what Ace Performance is? Sure. Um, so, I uh, Ace Performance. I um, I I actually started with a partner um, well over a decade ago, and uh, started out as as a performance shop. Kind of morphed into. Um, a perf- really a performance shop that has dinos. We started doing engine management. And then from there, it kind of parlayed into uh, a lot of boutique uh, British brands. So in <laughs> 20, 2014, I started, I became uh, involved with the Ariel brand. Um, so that's the Ariel Atom and the Ariel Nomad. So everything from the Aerial Atom 2 to the Aerial Atom 3. And in 2020, I actually was was personally in, um, uh, in charge of launching the Aerial Atom 4 in North America. Oh, so, wow. nice. So that, that, was, uh, that was something I did put together the whole press launch um, and uh, uh, released the car to the U.S., um, so we've got U.S. manufacturing in, in Virginia for the Ariel Atom 4. Oh, wow. Um, Didn't know that. In 2016, uh, back to Ariel, um, I was the first one to have an Ariel Nomad in the U.S. Um, that was 2016? And, uh, wow. Yeah. 2016, yeah. How many Matt then, LeBlanc uh, drove it before we ever saw it on anything else? That's how long ago Matt LeBlanc was on Top Gear. Like, I just remember <laughs> yeah, you're talking exactly right, to, uh, yeah talking to Clapman about it after they used one out West. Yeah. Yeah. So that car actually for, uh, Clapman, the car, um, I had that car in New York at the, uh, classic car club in Manhattan. Yep. And, um, uh, Zach from classic car club had just taken it to, um, Monticello motor club and got it properly, properly dirty. And then we got the call, oh, this needs to go out for this Oregon Trail shoot. <laughs> and uh, surprise. I was like, oh, man, what am I supposed to do? So literally, I went down. I brought one of my technicians with me. We went down to Classic Car Club in Manhattan. And like, we were going to go through the car mechanically to make sure that because it had to leave from Classic Car Club Man- Manhattan where it was properly hooned and then go straight off to to, <laughs> to go on the shoot. You know, oh, you guys are in this, like you understand this is how these things happen. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I wanted to go down and prep it. And then I get there and I thought like, okay, maybe they'd have some mud wash. No, it mud so oh. most of the time we're, i'm just literally and i'm i'm not dressed for this occasion i'm and i don't have any i'm like, like stealing detailing supplies and using whatever i can to like clean the car so we go through it mechanically and then the steering wheel is just like it's um alcantara yeah right but it's oh, so no. completely covered in mud and mat matted down it was just like what am i supposed to clean it with and i'm like oh well i guess i'll um guess i'll go in my toiletries kit and get my toothbrush out oh no (laughs) so Uh, so uh so yeah that's how that steering wheel got clean that's pretty funny 
Wow. So yeah, you don't want to tell Zach that if he's listening. <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned you got, it to him next time we talked to him. You got to hold his hands with your, two, with your teeth for like a while. <laughs> Were they displaying it? Because I've been to the car, the Classic Car Club a few times. Um, and for those who don't know what it is, it's, it's like a, a membership type facility that has this big open warehouse on the uh, on the water on the Hudson on the west side of Manhattan. Um, actually, right by the Javits Center where the New York Auto Show is. And they also have, you know, their, their membership entails participation so you can borrow the clar- the club's cars um, and they have a bar you know and they have events all the time and they do drives um, were they displaying the nomad filthy like that or was it just like somebody uh, returned it and well we had it we had it really clean um Z- uh zach uh, from class car club was like hey do you mind if i take this up to monticello and i was like yeah no problem and um, there's there's actually a, I forget where the video is. Maybe it was on their Instagram or something like that, but um, or YouTube. But it was him just completely thrashing, thrashing that Nomad. Oh, man. Um, and that was a Nomad tactical supercharged. Uh, and if you look in those pictures too, uh, that car doesn't have the top light bar in that in the in those pictures mm-hmm. and the reason is uh i think car and driver um happened to roll that car on us oh boy um yeah in another uh, magazine article so great great yeah so so we um... so that's why it's missing the um the top light bar <laughs> and there's a big ding in the top cage from that so, so that we frequently talk about how a lot of the UTVs don't have ROPS rated roll, but the, the cages themselves aren't actually rated to support the weight of the machine in the instance of a, a heavy rollover. I'm guessing the Nomads is. It's an actual like Yeah, I mean, they, cage. they literally rolled it off the side of a mountain oh, and God. then they rolled it back. And well, I, yeah, it's just. Was that? I mean, you wouldn't. It was probably all vehicle problem. It would. Never be the driver's fault, no, especially never. the press guy. Ever, right? Ever. No. So I, yeah, I, I just attribute that all to the vehicles, <laughs> or the um, or the or the road condition. Mm-hmm. It was never. Oh, yes, yeah, oh, yeah. not the driver fault. It's it's never operator error ever. <laughs> no, no, it never is. I was just driving along when right, right, this happened. The right? tree came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah shit right. like that. Yeah, that's, that's right. funny. You know, he just rolled over on its side, and I ended up down in a gully. We're all fine, but yeah, we extracted the vehicle. It's got some <laughs> things and dents. It's fine. Dude, I was digging <laughs> so hard to try to find him without a light bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, those the the Instagram pictures from the car club. That's the one where it had was the ones you showed earlier. Okay, with, with the red one was where it had no light bar. So uh, on the bright side, at least it was better than if they had taken Adam, taken an Adam over to the off-road course mm. at Monticello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been an interesting one to try to explain. But that's funny. So uh, out of the, all of that aerial products you've driven, if you had to pick a favorite, is it Nomad for the... Hands down. Yeah. <laughs> Hands down. I mean, you know, in the everyone would come up to me and they'd look at... and. And at the time in 2016, this is like when the Nomad came out, like UTVs were were getting bigger and more popular. And then they're like, oh, well, I can buy this $30,000 Can-Am. Why am I going to buy your Mm -hmm. $90,000 Nomad that's only rear wheel drive and, you know, doesn't it doesn't have all of the. Mm-hmm. uh kind of creature comforts that a side by side would have right like side panels and floor yeah, panels. <laughs> yeah exactly right uh, um or yeah bluetooth speakers or mm-hmm. things like that but the nomad everyone whenever i'd be driving that around whether it's on the street or off road or wherever they would just be like people's reaction and it goes along with all the aerial products people's reactions to it is they don't really know how much it costs. They don't really know much about it, but then they look at it and they see 
whether you're driving fast or slow, they're like, whatever that guy is doing, he's having a good time. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> that's kind of the, that's, that's kind of what makes it so fun. And so when, you know, I'd be driving on the street, they say, where are you supposed to drive that thing? I'm like, wherever I want. Right. right? You know, <laughs> point and shoot. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, the funny the curb here through the, through the Boston common doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we for so long, like lamented the rise of like fast SUVs, you know, but as you probably know, the streets of New York city and Boston are pretty horrendous. So oh yeah, the off-road variants of these things with, you know, ground clearance and suspension travel and sidewall is actually like a lot easier and better to drive in most circumstances around here than the sports car, or the supercar that people think is, you know, the fastest way between two points. So it makes sense. I mean, it, this thing would probably be a ton of fun around a city. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did drive it. Um, I did drive it one night uh, through the city in the rain. Um, oh, yeah. And it was pretty fun. It sounds this fantastic. One, this, this particular one was uh, supercharged, so 300 horsepower. Oh my gosh! About you know 300 crank horsepower, but oh. the the wheel horsepower is not too much different from that. About 1600 pounds. So and the noises it makes, and just you know, a, so just driving around in the city downtown Manhattan after leaving the the classic car club, just cruising around. Uh, yeah, you know, hooning it around, people uh, people took notice. It was pretty fun. Does it have traction control? No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> no, you're right foot. That's ABS. It. Nope. Wow. Okay, so this is no power I mean, steering. It, yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, right, it's, a, it's right about as raw side side. as you can get. You can Dude, get yeah. in trouble if you're not careful. I'm That's I'm fun. thinking of some dirt roads in Western Kansas where I would just just go forever. Like it just <laughs> they're they're just rough enough to have it be like. I feel like we just glide across the top of everything. Like it would it'd be amazing. Yeah, but, no, that's the, the, the vehicle is I've had some of the best times where um, we're like at the Monticello uh, motor club, their off-road course up there, just, mm -hmm. just, uh, just cruising around, you know, it had hydraulic handbrake as well. Nice. Oh uh, <laughs> so, so, you know, that, that, that is, that is just so much fun because it's got such torque, uh, especially with the supercharger, that even if you over break the thing, you can still just, you know, it's got a limited slip. You can just mm -hmm. still rock it out of any situation. So That's you don't nice. you don't always need to carry all the speed, right? Even if you so if you over handbrake the car, you can still shoot out of there and just, you know, as you as you do 180, you can just shoot out like nothing. That's amazing. I, st me... I still need to, um, I got to make it over to Monticello. I've, you know, I've driven past there a thousand times, but I've never actually like been to the track or the, or the off-road course. So it seems yeah, they've like got a, they've got a pretty neat, pretty neat setup. And, uh, you know, I think that a lot of other clubs from what I know are, you know, have taken notice and there are a lot of, I was just at a meeting with, um, uh, some of the top motorsport clubs. Um, I was down in Atlanta at the Porsche Center with some of the top um, clubs of the world. Um, and a lot of them have off-road experience mm -hmm. courses. Um, so there's ones in Japan that are going up in Australia, uh, Mexico, outside of Mexico City, all private country clubs. Hmm. Uh, there's Tampa, Sounds Florida all sorts of things that are that are going up so even in in what we kind of think is a, a little bit of a a lull in our economy there's still all of these opportunities that are going up hmm. um that's so interesting you know i from my reading and understanding and experience like the us is the only place that has like dedicated off road parks you know there's race tracks around the world and and clubs around all over but um i haven't really heard about you know the actual standalone places to go off road and like we have here and i know some of that is like land based and because we have so many different governing bodies you know broken up between states and counties and whatnot <laughs> um but yeah i mean 
I don't think Lime Rock will be doing one anytime soon. It's a little, yeah, no. a little tight there. But although I think that they're, uh, you know, they they they've done a lot recently with kind of their new ownership group, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and the introduction of like the FCP group as yep, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, FCP has done a lot for uh, for Lime yeah. Rock over the last little while. So they've uh, they've been they've been really really good. I think you'll see some some things happening there, but still they're they're so locked in and governed by what the town people are around them say. So that's where that's where places like Monticello excel because they're in the middle. You know, they're of still a reasonable distance <laughs> from a major, uh, you know, major uh, city, but at the same time there there's no real um there's right. no real governing laws oh what's the what's the track up in i think it's either massachusetts or new hampshire that like one of the turns basically like rides along cliff or something like that well there are two so i belong to a track called club motorsports which is up in new hampshire I'm, yep that's what i'm thinking of uh so it's a two and a half mile track with about 300 feet of elevation change basically cut on what Did you say three called a What's that? You said 300. 300? 300 feet, yeah. Holy Basically crap. cut on a uh, what's called a uh, uh, a ring dike, which is a collapsed volcano. So nice. super, super neat. I mean, it's just an incredibly picturesque uh, thing. If you're not if you're not paying attention, usually on a cool down lap, I'll tell people to to look look around, and they're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe!" <laughs> that, you know, I had some guys from the UK over because I I brought over um, the new Janetta uh, G56 GT4 and did a soft launch there a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I brought a couple of colleagues from Genetta UK over and they were like, this is like mini spa. Ooh. This is how cool this place is. Damn. I mean, so, praise doesn't get much higher than that for a track. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's awesome. So the, the, um, the, the, yep, there it is. <laughs> that is so active. Oh, that's kooky. Yeah. Yeah. And when that, you... that picture doesn't really even do it justice. I mean, uh turn five turn 11 that and uh those are those are kind of your highest elevation points okay um, turn turn nine this is kind of so from turn six down to turn eight it, it, turn eight turn nine is all downhill <laughs> okay um, and then that's turn eight to turn nine b is what they call the saddle and then from 9B to 10 is uh, is what we call horsepower hill. Um, because, <laughs> it, you know, if you're in a Miata coming out of 9B going up to turn 10, uh, you, you're you doing good if you can just maintain speed. Oh, wow. <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of slower cars will actually start losing speed as you go huh. up there. Okay, that's not... That that's steep enough for a uh, for a circuit, dude. I, I have limited <laughs> experience on Road America, and I remember climbing that hill to that hard left, and that oh, looks sure. way longer. Like, it's multiple corners. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Club Motorsports is a really unique place. It's about it's a little less than two hours from me. Um, actually, in that picture, if you looked in the upper left corner, there's a. Um, there's just past the go kart track. There's a there's a building there, and I actually own ten acres right next to the track where I've got nice. uh, storage for client cars and mm -hmm. uh, whatnot. So we actually pack it full of aerials and Genetas, and uh, and we roll them out, roll them right on the track, and That's then awesome. when we're done. Um, so yeah, basically at the at the top just the next clearing past the carding facility that's Is my that uh, that's my my <laughs> area so oh wow so i'm um, basically you know i can just drive cars right over and uh we we have a blast so two questions first of all what do you use as tow rig is always curiosity yep. so i've got a uh a 2020 ram 3500 laramie mm -hmm. <laughs> Commons. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. Gooseneck or do you just pull off the bumper? Uh, no. Uh, uh, so it's a gooseneck 
40 okay. foot goose neck. So, oh. so I can <laughs> 40. have... That's 40. That's a trailer. Yeah. So I can have... Um, I can fit two full-size cars in there. And yep. then over the... Over over kind of the the uh, gooseneck portion. Yeah, there it is. Over the gooseneck it's portion, I can... Um, I can have all of my gear, um, mm -hmm. tables, tents, nice. uh, supplies, okay. everything else. So, uh, so, all right. So you got lights in there and everything. <laughs> it's powered. So you mentioned Janetta. Um, yeah, sure, power. Yeah. So I, I want to just ask about Janetta and what yeah. they're doing now because I have uh, I have family friends probably haven't heard of them. Their company's name is Michael's Vintage Racing. Okay. They used to be out of uh, like Fishkill and they just moved. Um, but they work on and restore the old Janetta's like Absolutely. 60s, 70s, I think. Yep. So. Yeah. So Janetta was, was founded in 1958 by the Walklet brothers. Um, and they were actually in the U S in the, in the fifties. Uh, in 2005, Janetta was purchased by um uh, someone by the name of Lawrence Tomlinson, who still is the sole owner of Janetta to this day. Um, and Lawrence, interestingly enough, had just won Le Mans uh, driving a Panos. Oh, um, really? In, in 2005. And he <laughs> said, his successful businessman said, you know, I want a, I want a car company. So he actually was, was his first bid was to buy TVR. And okay. oh, man. so he got and and he got into this ironic times. Now he got into a bidding war with a uh, with a Russian fellow who ended up ending up buying TVR. Um, and, you know, they got into kind of a bidding war. And then Lawrence said, the heck with it. I'm going to buy Janetta. And so he bought Janetta. Um, so Janetta has obviously been been growing in the UK. It's it's massive, right? We've got five championship series, you know, it's live streamed all over. Uh, mm. There's just a ton of uh, Janetta um, going on in the UK. It, it's a household name. So an opportunity came to bring Janetta uh, to North America officially. Um, and I was presented the opportunity to become the, the North American brand director. Oh, wow. Um, so in 2020, at this, basically the same time I launched the, the Ariel Atom 4, I launched the Janetta G56. Well, we called it the G55 at the time, GTA, which is a, um, a GT Academy car, which is, you know, the, the, the current model now that we're, we're selling in the U S um, and it's a car that we've also had uh, two championship series uh, or two years of championship series in the, in the UK with this GTA car. Okay. And what it is, it's a, it's an entry, entry level GT car, right? Full okay. two frame, two. FIA, um, no ABS, no traction control, but paddle shifted sequential, mm -hmm all the proper you know race car stuff what's the engine in those uh so it's a ford v6 3.7 liter so it's actually out of like a mustang an older cyclone yeah out of yeah. a mustang but what we huh. do is we we put it in it's full crate motor we mm -hmm. still get it from ford um and we put a dry sump on it full Ooh, okay. tech engine management um so the motor is it's it's really bulletproof. Yeah, that that's the car right those, there. Those engines weren't bad in the Mustang. They were just like you know, perpetually well, overshadowed got, by the Coyote. Absolutely. And so now you put it in a car like the the Janetta that weighs twenty four hundred pounds. Whoa. You know. Oh. <laughs> and and then you've got <laughs> yeah you've got this engine that has a great power and torque curve. Mm -hmm. You put it in the right vehicle with the right weight. And, and it's actually a front mid-engine uh, car, right? Because the engine really sits so much further back than the, uh, the center line of the front axle. So you give it the 50-50 weight balance, then you've got a really exciting package. So it's the weight of an ND Miata with an extra 
yeah. 120 horsepower over yeah, the so MD2. 200, 200 and, you know, our, our, our base uh, tune is um, 270 horsepower. Uh, and then That's we have pro, pro tune is 300. Uh, it's a little bit off of that. So say 270 horsepower on, on my dyno jet, about 260. Oh, healthy so, enough for so there's not a lot of drivetrain loss um in the in the car mm -hmm. um and this you know so we've had uh, we've we brought about 35 cars over this year oh wow. um, and we'll probably do about 50 to 60 um <laughs> uh this coming year um so it, it's and that's pretty much kind of we're scaling our production because we still manufacture um for the rest of the world hmm. and um so we're just we're kind of exponentially growing Geneta UK I mean obviously coming into the U.S. market and now investing in the U.S. market I mean it's just it's it's exponential in size um to what what they have in the UK mm -hmm. and then the amount of um kind of club race tracks that we have in the US all across uh it, the the opportunity is just um massive to bring in a reliable car mm -hmm. um that's purpose built race car that you can do a spec race series with um we actually before I even brought over cars I said I want to make sure that we have a warehouse stocked full of parts. And that's where we've got Smart. South Boston, Virginia. Um, we've got a warehouse full of, uh, of Geneta parts. <laughs> so, so somebody you, bins if, it. Yeah. If you bin it, if you bin it on, uh, on, on Thursday, there's a good chance I can have you racing on Saturday. So, <laughs> wow. it, you know, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty cool mm -hmm. um, because I I really wanted to dispel a little bit of the myth that everyone's like, well, I love the idea of a boutique British car, but the the last thing I want to do is you know deal with the UK or deal with someone that doesn't understand my timeline or yeah, anything. massive downtime for reliability and durability issues. Right. So now the TVR. <laughs> Someone in the U.S. They can call my cell phone, and they can say, "Bear, I've got this issue. How do we resolve it?" That's and awesome. I have direct access to the U.K. factory, direct access to the to the you know everything in in Virginia. So we've basically been able to create the support structure, so that you know when when the people that are buying these cars want to go out and race and they want to spend their time that we can made, manage their their uptime. So that's the that's the GT4 car that we just, you know, kind of did a soft launch. We have had one team running SRO. They ran SRO last year. We ran a 24 hour series um, of Sebring and Dubai with this car. Uh, this is run in the British GT as well. Uh, and this car it it looks similar to the um the the gta car with the ford v6 but this is actually an an ls based um you know kind of geneta secret sauce based on an ls v8 engine with an x-track transaxle mm. good lord full motec um the uprights and the brakes come directly from our lmp3 program so they're full oh built uprights with huge wheel bearing cassettes, um, LMP3 brakes. This thing is, uh, it's got motorsport ABS, traction control. Hmm. A little and hardcore for, uh, it's, compared to the other ones. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it is, but ironically, um, this car is almost easier to drive than the other car, right? Because mm -hmm. the other car... It, one thing I didn't mention of the GTA car, the GTA car, we set that up on um, kind of narrow 245, uh, 245 uh, 20 inch tires, which oh, are wow. Michelin Pilot PS4S, right? Okay. So, Great tire. And the reason for that is because that's your entry into a GT car, right? Mm -hmm. So 
what do you want to do? You want to feel the car move around. How do you do that? You put it on street tires, right? Mm -hmm. No yep. ABS, no traction control. You get the car to move around, right? And so then someone can can learn learn the skill rather than the guy that goes out first and his first track car is a GT3 RS, right? <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah. you'll turn fast lap times, but if you turn any of those nannies off, you're going to end right. up in the woods. Yeah, bad time. So it's just, this is kind of goes back to the whole ethos of, of Janetta which is kind of provide a ladder for drivers and retain them within their ranks, right? So they can start in, originally um, we saw the G40s, which are kind of the junior cars. Um, those G40s, you can start when you're 14 years old in the UK. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Lando Norris was a, a G40 Janetta driver, mm -hmm. right? He came through yeah. that rank. Yep. Uh, Jamie Chadwick, who's the Formula E champion that's won three years in a row, yep. was a Janetta driver. So they, that's kind of how they, um, you know, they kind of groom and you kind of work up the ladder. We're, mm -hmm. Whereas in the UK, in the US, we'll, we'll get there right now. We've got the GTA and the GT4. Um, at some point, we'll probably have some sort of some sort of junior car. I think it's I think there's a strong demand in the U.S. for that um, because knowing um, it's coming out of karting, you know, it's yeah, either that's where I was going. Karting and then you go into like a formula car, but mm -hmm. the expense to go into a formula car is exponential versus karting, right? And there's not no that karting's cheap. Like you can go into <laughs> Spec Miata, right? right? Right. But then. Okay, you can go into Spec Miata on an SCCA level, NASA level, which is great, great competition, mm -hmm. you know, great learning tool. Um, but then to go into further Miata competition like Global MX5 Cup, everything else, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a large spend, and then the upside of you going from there to somewhere else, it's, right. it's difficult, right? right? So you know, it's a very kind of um you know it's a small percentage of the person that's actually going to make it uh through there so this mm -hmm. actually allows if if we were to do something it would allow for a, a a true safe gt car um race series that's you know kind of fun and exciting and and gives you the the requisite skills to kind of either progress or just you know enjoy race, race. yeah right <laughs> right some people get to the point with things where they're like, you know what? I won't be able to do this as a career, but I'm loving the hell out of it. So I'm just going to keep playing around. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So um, speaking of playing around, I, I really want to talk about defenders and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and I know we're, you know, brushing up on getting towards the end of our, so, our time so here. You, so you found it. So there's the, um, this is the only uh, Boulder Bulldog in the United States. Oh, and wow. My gosh. This, this so kind of, for the audience, explain what the bulldog is because everybody knew the, it was it was the wildcat. Wildcat. The so the bulldog one. is um, a full space frame. Uh, it it looks like a defender because it has all. It's been designed to have all the defender body panels. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the bowler bulldog is set up um, to be full rally raid. This is turnkey. You can order this, go out, do the Dakar, do the Baja. Case. that that's what this truck is is designed for um you know it's uh that's this crazy particular one has a um uh a turbo diesel uh oh nice land rover and it's got a zf eight speed transmission hmm. so like you'd find in you know all the most you know, look at the gear shift you can see that <laughs> That looks uh, yeah. pretty familiar. <laughs> you know, Motec, Motec dashboard. Um, you know, PDM. Everything else is 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 pretty simplified. Um, uh, suspension is modified from a uh, like a Range Rover Sport. Mm. Um, you can see in the back that's a transmission cooler right that's there. Just say, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, I love it. Yeah, transmission cooler, and <laughs> this one. It's actually not even equipped right there but um uh currently it has three rear three full-size spare tires on the back mm -hmm. and it's got um uh hydraulic 
uh, jack pistons that come down from just behind the front uh, doors and they shoot down. And uh, so you're able to, uh, it'll lift one side of the vehicle up at a time. So that's you can change. the most race car thing ever. That's so great. <laughs> got, <laughs> it's, got on. On, it's got onboard air as well. Let's uh, back up a second. It is modified Range Rover sports suspension. Yeah. Yeah. So I, the, uh, but the, I'm uh, not sure what to make of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is, it's, it's straight parts bin. Um, and so actually Bowler was acquired recently um, by Jaguar Land Rover. Right. Huh. And, Interesting. And so I, I was just about a month and a half ago, I was over in the UK and I went to uh, Fen End, which is, Fen End is Jaguar Land Rover's uh, proving ground. Uh, and they run their, um, uh, some of their special ops out of Fen End. So I went there. Yeah, that's, that's what the. Ooh, that's pretty. Was. Yeah. Um, and then you got the sand mats up there. That's what those orange mm -hmm. things are. Yep. Um, so went to Fen End to uh, test drive the new uh bowler defender challenge which is uh which is a uh if you've ever seen it it's a the new d90 with a full bowler treatment oh, uh full cage and full cage. Uh, i went over there to test drive it and i talked to the guy at security and he said oh yeah you know it's very high like there's security it's gated you you have to like you can't just walk in there right so i mm -hmm. walked in and the guy said and I said, oh, I'm here to, to do this. And I'm here with this guy. And, and they said, okay, we'll let you in. He goes, well, um, the, the last guy to drive this was Ben Collins. Oh, God. <laughs> Stig. <laughs> right? so That's I'm like, uh, okay, big okay, shoes cool. to fill. Yeah. So I, and then after I left, I said, well, next time you see Ben Collins, you can tell him that Bear Connor drove that thing <laughs> better than anyone you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny that's, that's a good fantastic. looking thing man i i i spent a week last year with a, a d90 with the turbo four and this year i had a a v8 you know the supercharged svr oh, motor d90 for a week and god it is just turning that into a race car would be the, the funniest thing of all time like just yeah, you, you so guys, good you guys will have to look yeah uh, so so there is, so the Ben Collins did it at Fen End and there's a, there's a, um, you know, a stig drive of that. I think Chris Harris also has driven it. Um, there's a number of people have uh, uh, maybe even Henry Catchpole. I think he, I think Henry also did it there. Um, but it, it's wonderful. So I spent time with the bowler team and about ten of their uh, ten of their guys at the Yorkshire Rally, um, and it is really you know it's 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 good rally racing. They have their own championship within within kind of a rally organization, um, and and they're growing it. Um, mm -hmm. And these things are they're they're bulletproof. They're fun. They're um, it really engaging so yeah they, they look like a good time what's more fun the bowlers or the nomad um a little bit different but the the bowler they both create the same style of reaction um the bowler is a little bit nicer in the fact that you don't always get wet in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a little bit of heat, although, uh, and actually we, we cut in, we've got pop-up vents for the, uh, for airflow. It does have AC in there. Mm. Um, granted it's, you know, race car AC in a very hot truck that has no insulation. So again, same thing. Janetta has actually, it's uh, they have ac in them but it's not gonna uh kind of throw ice cubes at you like a regular right. street car would uh it's That's just funny. meant to maintain 
uh, cockpit temperature to like an FIA standard, mm -hmm. which is, I think, like 120 degrees or something. Good Lord. You know? Yeah. It's it's not cold. My, my yeah. favorite is it's... every image I've looked for has at least one wheel in the air. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. I, I've got I've got video of uh, of 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 me jumping, you know, all four wheels off the ground, jumping jumping this thing. Awesome. I have, of the bulldog, we have pictures of it ten feet in the air. Oh, oh my god, god. That, um, uh, I feel that in my spine. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah, it's just. It's like butter. There, <laughs> there's, uh, there's that's nothing, awesome. Nothing wrong with it. So it's, it's a really, really unique vehicle. Um, I, I'm excited to see where Bowler can go. Um, you know, after spending time at uh, at the factory, there's there's a lot of neat things coming out. Um, you know, it's so they interesting. They did announce the CSP five seventy five. Um, which is something that is uh, hopefully we get here in the U S um, but that is, it's basically like a, it looks like a, a, a it's a defender 110 essentially, hmm. but with the, um, with the 575 horsepower uh, supercharged mm -hmm. F type R V eight, the best engine of oh, that sounds that engine it. makes. Oh but wow! That's fully amazing. set up with uh, bulldog suspension. Um, mm -hmm. So this is like the this is like the the cool SUV that you want to roll through the uh, parking line at school in. You know this. Yeah. <laughs> this would make this would make the G wagon look. You know, Seriously. even the four by four squared would make it look a little bit like. Oh. See that with with so that engine, something that looks like that is like game over that's like the one thing to drive for the rest of your life oh yeah yeah there's so, you know and it's so interesting that that like bowler is doing you know the the baja ready vehicles you know because i mean i'm in southwest connecticut and uh and glickenhouse is not too far and yep. <laughs> i've seen the boot on the street you know parked and oh yeah same thing you know buy it get your seat fitted for you and you know yeah, no, it's definitely and and uh, you know the guys from SEG and that and uh, they're 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 doing some awesome awesome things. Mm -hmm. um, you know the bowler fits it's it's a little different price point than the um, than the but boot. I, yeah, uh, I, I mean, so. not not considerably less, but it's you know I can imagine what the uh, what a five seventy five would probably retail for. And it'd probably be, you know, well over two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But ultimately, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you look at a you, you look at kind of the the luxury performance SUV market, I mean, you can spend right. almost five hundred thousand dollars on a Cullinan, right? So or Eurus or or, or um, yeah, or yeah. Eurus or something like yeah. that. At least with uh, the CSP five seven five, you get a back seat. Like right, <laughs> boots it's two. <laughs> but uh yeah, you get the, exhaust right behind your head <laughs> the the boot i've never been in a boot i've been around them but uh it's it, kudos to what what they're doing right it's you know mayhem I, um, yeah it's it's one of those things whereas i talk to a lot of these other manufacturers and the boutique manufacturers and um it's it's interesting because I, I try and say we're not, even though we make a similar product, we're, we're creating experiences for people and it's not necessarily, I'm going to buy a boot or I'm going to buy mm -hmm. a boulder, right? It's, mm -hmm. I can buy both of these tools, right? We're in right. a, we're, we're kind of catering to a market where it's, I don't have just a Janetta and a Radical. I have a Janetta right. and a Radical an atom and these are the things that i have because this is this is the, <laughs> yeah. the, the type of vehicle i like right you it's know you don't just have one lotus you have a lotus and a caterum and right a, you know it's that's a very different friends. mentality <laughs> very different mentality from you know like me or chris i'm like okay if i sell my 460 what am i going to replace it with and chris is like if i sell a suburban what am i going to replace it with it's not 
okay, I'll get a Suburban and an Escalade and, you know, and a, an LX. <laughs> it's just like a totally different frame of mind. Well, I mean, it, it is, yeah, but it's, um, I, I think that the only way that these um, boutique manufacturers are going to continue to turn out vehicles like this is, A, if they kind of, stop trying to compete as hard with each other right and yeah. just focus on the product and and know that the customers are there and they're not exclusive right mm -hmm. because the same buyer that's going to buy a Janetta may also buy a bowler right mm -hmm. it's you know they just want different yep. tools for their i want to hang out shed, with that guy. right they've, yeah right <laughs> they've been they've been bitten so hard by the by the bug they want quality. Mm -hmm. They want something that, that, that they know that they're, you know, that they're special. Mm -hmm. And that's where I've seen a lot of people also come over from other marks, whether it's Lamborghini or Ferrari or Porsche, like in order to make a blip on their radar, you have to, you have to have a multi-million dollar portfolio of right. cars, right? Right. And even then you need to be special. I mean, look at what happened with, with the guys trying to buy four GTs, right? Mm -hmm. Think about all those people that didn't get in that have, yeah. you know, multi-million dollar car collections and they submitted appeals and everything else like that. Yeah, that was crazy. Meanwhile, Where if you if you join a brand like Janetta or Bowler or Ariel or SCG, you're you're brought into the family and then mm -hmm. All of a sudden there's a lot of experiences and things that are opened up for you that kind of go beyond just buying the hardware. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. I think and that's what makes people it forget really about that. Yeah. You know, even you can see that even like going a degree closer to street cars, like buying a, a Lotus versus buying, you know, a Corvette or, you know, a, an Aston. I mean, Aston's, you know, small in of itself comparatively to some companies but lotus is even like a narrower focus so we are definitely getting close on time so i just want to ask what's in your personal garage what are your uh your toys or uh, or, or my, not toys my, i know so my personal garage is a little bit light right now um <laughs> right now because right it's changing. Right now. <laughs> so yeah um so i'm actually i'm I'm actually very close to finishing up. I've got a, a BMW E91 wagon. Cool. Uh, that I've just, it was a manual 328 wagon that I'm finalizing the uh, full M3 conversion on. So, oh, so I've oh got that's the V8, perfect car. V8 manual. Is it this one? Uh, oh, this, man. Yep. yep. Oh, man. Are those Alpina one. wheels too? Yeah. So I'm going to do the, so because I've got all the M3 suspension and stuff, the Alpina wheels go away. Um, but it it will be a full, you know, M3 fenders. The rear fenders are getting oh, done, wow. M3 bumper. Uh, so it's kind of all of that stuff is, is just about done. All the electronics are done. I gutted the interior, swapped the harness, made all the other stuff work. So it's literally going into paint this winter. Nice. And that'll be... Um, that'll be my uh that's awesome that'll be one of my fun um uh dailies i've got a truck i've got an older um uh uh porsche cayenne turbo which i actually am going to do a uh you know lift euro wise lift kit and mm -hmm. all the other, nice you know yep. bigger stuff because that's kind of the the winner, uh, winner beater. Deck it out like the uh, Trans Siberia Rally trucks. Yeah, exactly. Um, my wife has a, a Mercedes uh, GLS 550, so that's like our our family kid hauler that mm. you know gets us there just just quick enough. And mm. um, and then I've got uh, I've got a Zenos. Um, so this is something I own with a client, which is a Zenos C10S. Um, which is uh, a, a pretty unique car that was started by going back to Lotus. Uh, Mark Edwards, who is the current CEO of Lotus, had started Zenos Cars with, with another guy from Caterham. Oh, wow. um, 
And unfortunately, that company went into receivership. Um, uh, but it's a super fun car um, made out of, uh, you know, recycled composites. It's mm. a full backbone aluminum rib structure car. Suspension hangs off. Crazy. It. It's so cool. That's crazy. Uh, EcoBoost powered, um, two liter EcoBoost mm. with a six speed manual. So nice. very analog car that makes cool noises. Um, doesn't Sounds get fun. driven. Doesn't get driven nearly enough. <laughs> um, I also have a, another car we're finishing up, which is an RS1000 uh, Escort. Nice. Uh, that is also getting built with an EcoBoost, uh, paddle shifted sequential, motorsport ABS. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's not that one, but you can oh. see it in the background, the, the one in the, the uh, back there. Van. So that's a full shell that I brought in from Wales. Um, and uh, that's crazy. I see it's got the proper lights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everything about it is, uh, you know, that that car is proper. This this uh, three door escort was um, was one for uh, for my friends down in Connecticut there at the Cultivated Collector. Mm. I don't know if you've ever uh, seen some of their stuff, but yeah, I uh, <laughs> I go to the uh, the New Canaan yeah. caffeine and carburetor shows all the time, and I, I wander over to Cultivated Collector pretty much every time I'm in town. Yeah, it's like I could be there in six minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, Matthew and I are, go way back. And, oh, really? Oh, that's funny. Yep, yep. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah, they uh, they casually roll out things like you know the what is it the xjr15 they'll oh, yeah. have like two of those at a show i'm like yep. oh <laughs> didn't even yeah. know this was here yeah you know, exactly they uh they, they bring out some wild wild things yeah I, I was actually he's there got a, he's got such a refined and uh, totally you know um amazing uh, kind of uh, detail on on some of these cars and and really when they talk about curating classic cars they are oh, yeah. he is on the he is on the on the forefront they just rolled out a uh like a 90s japanese collection mm -hmm. of, of cars um, they were they involved at the new york auto show display the yeah, jdm so. yeah the other thing that they had that was super interesting that I didn't know existed, and this is going back like probably two years, but they had, I think like one of three E90 M3 lightweights that yeah. had made it carbon everything, you know, slick yeah. top car. And it was like, it's like, it just yeah. looks like an M3. Meanwhile, a 200, but it was $250,000. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was crazy. You know, yeah. some more escort pictures. Mm. Yeah, that's such a good shape that car. It is. Yeah, it's, and and in the uh, in the UK at the at the track rod rally, there were probably I don't know a hundred of these. I mean, Jesus. not quite at at the level that you know this car is going at, but um, but really really fun to watch. Really fun to uh, watch toss through the woods. That it makes me think of. Um... And I could be completely wrong on if it's the right style of escort or not. Uh, I went to rally in a hundred acre wood and there was one, there was an escort running down there. It was the shamrock one. And every yep. time it would go by, mm. it just sounded like an angry, angry beast. This, yeah. I think he actually hit me with a rock going around the corner. It threw a rock <laughs> yeah. so far. You're exactly right. They called me once and they go, uh, bear, do you have another uh, escort? Because they know I've got one. They're like, do you have another windshield? We just broke a windshield. <laughs> oh, God. And ironically, like the windshield on my, I have a, a windshield. I haven't installed it yet because, it, you know, it's scary to ship windshields from the UK. But they're all, uh, it's actually, it's got a, like a lot of British cars has a heating element in it. Mm -hmm. So, super super specific <laughs> yeah, yeah super super specific yeah you're not gonna find one of those windshields around that's one of the things you don't think about when when working on a project car it's like 
finding glass for a car long out of production, you know, that wasn't sold here or wasn't sold in high quantities here. That's you know, why, why you buy a genetic? Like, Cause he's got a whole warehouse full of parts. Exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I didn't have to, for, for some of the parts for my escort, the, uh, I had to go to, um, I was in Ireland and I, I was like, I told my wife, I'm like, we have to just go buy this place in Galway and, uh, and stop and pick up some parts and i ended up coming home with like carbon fiber and mirrors nice and stuff my carry on <laughs> yeah right sir do you have anything to declare no no, no. <laughs> i don't know where any of this came from yeah yeah, I, I just... <laughs> yeah bear do you i mean i would say do you have anything to plug but ace performance yeah dot ace com performance, genetta aerial ace performance systems.com yep you got me and uh, so a lot, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff going on um, with all boutique cars, but really it's just reach out to me. Let me know if you got any questions on, on any of that stuff. Um, we get kind of deep into, into everything from engine management to tuning to, you know, how, how to get and, and drive one of these cool um what I would call experience cars, you know, whether it's on the track, mm -hmm. off road, anything like that. We, now, you, we have yeah. the opportunities. You have me wanting to make a trip back east, and I rarely want to go back east. I was going to say, right. I have, <laughs> I have one more question for you, and yeah. is that can I come visit? <laughs> Absolutely, anytime. You're only like two and a half hours away, so yeah, yeah, well, let's plus, do it. Plus, Camille, cool. let you sleep on the couch or something. It's possible. Yeah, no, I, yeah, well, yeah probably. Absolutely, and. uh you know, I've got a house right by the racetrack too. Mm -hmm. So let's do um, it. Oh my yeah. God, so, it's so far away. It's easy. I have your <laughs> bring, just bring a cool press car and uh, we'll make sure that, that, that you get the proper photos. It okay. may be really dirty by the time you return it. It's it too bad we didn't plan truck, this. But otherwise it'll be yeah. fine. It's too bad we didn't plan this in advance because I have the Cadillac Escalade V right now, oh, which cool. man, you can hear that thing a mile away. I'm it's, sure you'll I have saw, other press Oh my God. I saw uh, like a video of it. Uh, what was it? Oh, um, it was, I think it was Jack. Uh, uh, oh, Savage Geese guys. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I saw his clip the other day. So yeah. they've done, they, they've done some stuff with me i've done uh i had them do the the first um aerial atom four video mm -hmm. uh which was you know fantastic they, they, make they came down cool. and they're just Great stuff they are just you know consummate professionals mm -hmm. um and just dive so deep into the minutia mm -hmm. uh, so it's really that's a that's a cool video if you uh if, if you ever get time you know mm -hmm. their videos are their videos are long, but they're just so good. It's like a happy medium between like a TST and a engineering explained. Yeah, right. So I had them for a couple of days down in uh, South Boston, Virginia. I was with them um, and, and we were able to do this stuff. I even provided them with some really bad Mexican and, uh, <laughs> and some, some really poor burgers, but nice. they still don't hate me. <laughs> yeah because they uh, gave my adam time yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah uh, well man. sweet thank you so much for coming on the show yeah thanks man. all right it's nice to meet you it's been fun thanks guys mm -hmm.